Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday. It's the first day of March 2013, and this is Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net speaking. We had a heck of a uh, volatile week here, but uh, at the end of the week, we did finish with a slight gain for the S&P 500. The uh, Russell 2000, which has been leading, was down slightly, and the financials, another leader, were down a little bit. Let's take a look at the charts and uh, see how it went down here and what's possibly ahead for the uh, coming weeks ahead. We did get down in the S&P. P500 uh, close to the 50-day moving average, but didn't touch upon it. So you know this week's low is going to be important uh, for uh, moving forward here in the next uh, couple weeks. I would think that uh, we want to see basically this uh, general area 148 to 149 uh, and a half really hold. That's going to be our key level going forward. As we know, we've been talking about this market for the last uh, couple months as innocent till proven guilty, as it had been holding up above these key intermediate levels of support that gave way last Friday and it uh, paved the way for a very volatile week this week of course uh, and we did break that trend line last week as well so it seems you know I don't I'm not I don't want to call a top or anything like that here there's just no evidence of it but I am reminded of the phrase from George Soros the quote that is that volatility peaks at turning points and diminishes with the trend as we've had this uptrend there's been very little volatility obviously we're seeing a lot of volatility here now and it doesn't mean a top, but it means that perhaps uh, you know at least the easy part of the rally has been been made. That is the uh, the easy part of this rally, uh, the, the easy money has been made, and now it's going to get a little bit more challenging. That's not a, a big issue. We are still above a rising 50-day moving average for uh, pretty much all these markets, and um, it appears as though we're going to need to at least settle down for a while in here next week. I think we want to see probably 149 and a half ish hold. Um, um, ideally, we would like to see that rising five-day moving average hold, but uh, it's you know I would expect a little bit more volatility in here as things uh, just kind of uh, settle down a little bit. The Nasdaq uh, back into its you know the primary channel that it's been in, which is really about 63. Uh, I, I'm sorry, 66 and a quarterish up to about that uh, $67 and 60 cent level. Um, so 67.50 actually up to 67.80 has been that little band of support and resistance we've been talking about it offered resistance once again this week and really overall in the weekly time frame we're just uh just going back and forth here uh, in the uh, in the Nasdaq. If we look at the you know the longer term trend line on the weekly chart, we do still have the possibility here. This is something to be aware of that we have this uh, what's looking like a right shoulder developing. It would take really a move below, close below, probably I'd say at least 65 uh, in this longer term trend line to to really uh, get me thinking that maybe a bigger decline would be ahead, and then we would have this neckline down here at about 60. Uh, uh, two and a half ish or so. That's just something to keep an eye on. It's not a bearish call, but the uh, Nasdaq really overall has just been a real mess this year. Um, it is. Uh, we can go back and take a look, and we can see that you know uh, year to date the uh, Na the Nasdaq is up three and a half percent. That's been a laggard, of course. Um, perhaps it's building energy for a break to the upside and trapping shorts in here. We really just don't know yet until we break this range. You can't say which way it's going to go. So we have to be aware of all possible possibilities and uh, be prepared to act on uh, new information as the market gives it to us, whether that information comes from fundamental sources such as uh, foreign market uh, uh, polit politics and their elections, uh, if that really matters to our market, or whether it's uh, something the Fed says, whatever the, you know, or, or our government uh, getting their act together or not getting their act together. The fact is we get new information, uh, fundamentally we get new information based on price. I like to act more upon price or at least try to anticipate what are the possible scenarios for price action once we have that motivator. Whether the motivator comes from breaking down through support, uh, that's a motivator for a lot of participants, or is it the, uh, the motivation that, that has occurred because of a... Uh, a uh, macro news story. Either way, you, you can you can't predict the macro news stories, but you can anticipate what different scenarios could potentially unfold 
price-wise when we when the market receives this new information. So the Russell 2000 remains above its rising 50-day moving average, and it came down and tested some recent support here. Uh, we talked about some uh, Fibonacci levels and volume-weighted average price levels as well. I'm not going to mention those again here today, but you know this week uh, or next week rather about 88.50. We're going to want to see the market hold above that level. That's obviously uh, <clears throat> a key near-term level uh, that we want to see hold to support. Other than that, I think it's likely that this market kind of continues to consolidate in here and we're going to see some maybe uh, some correction through time. We do have the primary trend higher, so corrections through of, of time typically resolve themselves in the direction of the primary trend, which is obviously higher here. So don't be uh, quick to get bearish, but if we break down uh, below 50, the, the 88 and a half and that 50 day moving average would certainly warrant more caution. The semiconductors uh, came down to a key level as well and they tested this prior little band of resistance which has uh, provided support so far. I kind of thought we might continue down towards that 50 day moving average. That didn't occur though and we see now that uh, this market is back up to an area where it's seen a little bit of prior uh, importance that is as support over here just at the beginning of uh, February. that's it, turned into resistance uh, now just here near term. Looking at the weekly time frame, you know, we've got this downtrend line that was broken. We've got the highs from last year, which are uh, kind of being tested in here right now. So the primary trend still remains higher, and it looks like we're correcting a little bit through time. Uh, uh, you know, further pull back down towards the 50-day moving average, a drift down towards that area wouldn't come as a surprise and wouldn't be uh, the end of anything, I don't think. Uh, we've got this trend line to keep an eye on as well. So, you know, be prepared for more volatility, I think, is the uh, prudent way to look at this market. The financials uh, came down and really, you know, they were about two cents off of that 50-day moving average, which is rising. And now they are kind of, uh, you know, same with the rest of the market, experiencing some, some bigger volatility. And that volatility should uh, uh, start to uh, calm down a little bit here, I would think. Um, but, $17.15 to $17.20. That's a key level of support that we're going to want to see hold. And it obviously becomes more important because that's about where we have this rising 50-day moving average. That's It's a rising 50-day moving average. So that's coming up. You can see uh, here it's uh, currently at $17.22. So overall, again, I think the market, you know, you have to look at it as still on the bigger picture as innocent till proven guilty. Uh, uh, that is on the daily time frames. However, when we look down at the short term time frames we're seeing a lot of volatility a lot of people are getting uh, you know hit out of some of their stops uh, in 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 uh, some of the bullish stocks and you know that's the way it's going to be you're not going to get stopped out uh, at the top that's not what a stop loss does you might get stopped out let's say over here and then you know you sit on the sidelines saying what the heck's happening in here so I think that this this market is really more conducive to shorter term trading it's interesting too to take a look at Apple because we were talking about the possibility of Apple continuing to break down into that uh, 420-ish level. And I'm going to put on here real quick, this is Realtek, by the way. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just, I clicked on this volume by price, and you can see that now we've got the volume by price bars over here on the right-hand side. I'm just going to add a few more days here. By the way, Realtek uh, is, as you probably are aware, the sponsor of this uh, Friday afternoon show. Uh, go to Realtek.com and, and uh, take a look at their site uh, and the brokers that they uh, offer uh, relationships with. But here we can see that this, you know, this volume by price tool, we've got, uh, well, we've got the possibility that maybe down towards 415, 420 is where this market's headed real near term. And then I think even as low as about maybe 405-ish. So if we take a look at, you know, what we were looking at uh, earlier in the week, um, I was thinking that, you know, the market could could break, uh, continue to break down hard towards that level. We had a rally up and then it looked like, well, maybe we're going to get a rally up towards the uh, volume weighted average price since the um, uh, earnings report, which was uh, basically right here at about 455 right now. We have all these moving averages declining, the 10, the 20, the 50. People are still trying to pick the bottom in here. Uh, basically, anyone who's done that, anyone who's purchased the stock in the last six months is losing money, uh, unless you're trading it, of course. And there's a lot of trade opportunities in a stock like Apple with all its liquidity. But it, it just still seems like it's headed down towards four, uh, 400 or so. Um, and, you know, I talk about that 
that four, you know, that four ten, four fifteen level as potential support. And I see people making comments on YouTube and that sort of thing, saying, "Yeah, I'm definitely going to buy it when it gets down there." I don't think it's wise to buy it down there. That's just a potential level of support. It's still in a downtrend. It's guilty till proven innocent. That's a potential level of support for the stock. Uh, all the way down, we've been talking about this stock being guilty till proven innocent. We've been looking at uh, moving averages as potential support. Those potential support levels all failed to hold. We've been talking about Fibonacci levels. We spoke about the 38.2% uh, the retracement. We talked about the 50%, the 61.8% retracement. They all failed. These are just tools to help us assist in our analysis to say, here are potential levels to look for where the market may find support. And what we would do at that point is then look to shorter term timeframes and say, is the market in fact finding support here and the buyers are coming back into it? And right now, there is zero evidence of that happening in Apple. Hope everyone has a good weekend. Uh, come to alphatrends.net and check out uh, that the site if you haven't been on it before. Um, I do videos every single day for subscribers that include stock picks. And uh, we have a webinar every other uh, Monday uh, where all answers are, uh, all questions are answered. And there's a live chat room all day too. So uh, thanks for tuning in.